Here we are, and we're going to talk about end behavior of polynomial functions. End behavior, what happens at the far left of the graph and the far right of the graph? Which direction is the graph going? Let's start with a, a quick example of just a, um, a linear equation. You don't have to graph this y equals 2x plus 3 to know in your brain what's going on with it because you know that you have, oh, and let's, let's do another one, uh, y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. The first one, you know that the y-intercept is 3, and because the slope is positive, it's going to rise from the left to the right, and also it's going to have a, uh, a slope greater than 1. And the second one, you know that the y-intercept is negative 2, and it's going to have a negative, and it has a negative uh, slope, so it's going to go from upper left to lower right at a, a slope less than 1. So you don't really have to uh, graph this in order to understand what the graph is going to look like. That's what we're after here. We want to talk about polynomial functions who are going to have little twists and turns in them and what happens at the far left and the far right of the graph. So let's erase this and get started. Um, polynomial functions have smooth continuous graphs. Okay, a polynomial function is a second degree or greater function. x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, bigger than two, second degree or greater. That's all we're going to be dealing with here. And what we're going to do is we're going to eyeball. We're not going to actually graph these. We're going to, it's going to describe what's happening in the graph by looking at the equation. Just like 2x uh, plus 1 we know where the y-intercept is, we know where the slope is. All right, so let's get a couple of examples here. Here's two examples of polynomial functions, uh, second degree or greater. And notice that both of these have smooth, continuous graphs. There's no gaps, there's no craggy places, there's no doubling back on themselves. On the other hand, these two graphs are not polynomial functions because they either have a broken part in them whoops didn't mean to do that let's try this again a broken part in them here or they have a sharp corner so these guys are not polynomial functions the first two are alright so let's talk about the end behavior of the polynomial that's where the the arrows are on the ends All right. In this case, you, we have a function whose ends, the, the arrows, both point down. In this one, we have a polynomial function whose ends point up. Now, please note that what's in the, in the center here, I don't care how many twists and turns they have, we're only looking for the ends, what's happening with the ends, okay? All right, so in this case, we have the left end is going down and the right end is going up and here we have the left end is going up and the right end is going down so those are the four possibilities and that's what we're going to look at the actual equation and decide how can we tell where those ends are I don't care what the graph looks like I don't ha care how many twists and turns it has in it I'm only looking for the end behavior okay so Actually, what I had done earlier is I had erased some of this stuff so that you could just see the ends. Probably not a good idea, but I did it anyway. Oh, well, let's move on. <clears throat> leading co coefficient test. Leading coefficient test. Okay. The leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial are the two things we're going to look at to, to determine what the end behavior looks like. All right? If I have a polynomial that just in, like, for instance... 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6, something like that. I'm going to look at the leading coefficient, the first coefficient, and that coefficient will be assigned with the uh, highest degree of the polynomial. And a is the leading coefficient, and n is the degree of the polynomial. Okay? All right, so let's do a little chart here. Let's, let's see how we can take a look at this and determine whether both ends are up, both ends are, are down, or one's up and one's down. Okay, if the degree is odd, if your exponent is um, 1, 3, 5, 7, whatever, or what happens if your degree is even, 
your exponent is even. Those, those are two possibilities. Now, within those two possibilities, if the degree is odd and the uh, leading coefficient is positive or negative, or same thing with n is even, we have the possibility of the leading coefficient being uh, positive or negative. So what happens here? Okay, let's draw a few more lines here. Okay, if the exponent is odd, we know that they're going to go two different directions. If a is positive, it's going to tend upward, kind of like if you think about a positive slope. So it's going to go from lower left to upper right. If it is negative, it's going to drop. It's going to go from upper left to lower right. All right. If n is even, they're going to both go the same direction. And if it's um, uh, if the leading coefficient is positive, it'll tend up. And if it's negative, it'll tend down. So those are four possibilities you need to kind of just get into your brain here. If it's odd, if n is odd, the degree is odd, it's different directions. If the degree is even, it's going to go in the same direction. Okay, positive, negative, up or down. Okay, now I have actually taken the graph of, or the equation of this function and graphed it in my graphing calculator just to give you an example, just to show you that I can take my equation and I can figure out what's happening with the ends of my equation by just looking at it. Okay? All right. So in this graph, it's going from down to up. Now, how would I know that? Well, my leading, co my leading um, coefficient, my leading uh, and my degree of my equation, the degree of my equation is 3, which is odd, and the leading coefficient is positive. Odd means it goes in opposite directions, which you can see by the graph, and posit means it goes from down to up, or it tends like a, a positive slope. All right, go ahead and do your checkpoint number one. Come back to this example while you're doing it. All right, example number two. f of x equals uh, negative 4x cubed times the quantity x minus 1 squared times the quantity x plus 5. Now this is in factored form, and you don't, you don't have to expand this equation to figure out what the end behavior is going to look like. What you, the two things you need to know is what's the leading coefficient and what's the degree of the equation. Well, the degree of the equation is going to be 3, since this is factored form, I have to consider all three factors. This is degree 2, and this is degree 1. So the degree of this entire equation is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 6. 6 is an even number, so I know my ends are both going to either go up or they're both going to go down. So what do I look at to make that determination? And um, that was even. Okay, it's either going to go down or it's both going to go up. So I look at my negative 4. And my negative 4 tells me that they both go in the same direction but because a is negative, they're both going to go down. So go ahead and do your checkpoint number 2. Okay, now we have kind of a long one. And this is an actual statistical equation that was um, from a, a medical study back in the 1980s. This models the number of AIDS cases diagnosed between 1983 and 1991. And if you graph just part of this function, it would look like this. Obviously, it's going to be, we're only graphing this in the, in the first quadrant, close to zero. So you can see from 1983 to 1990, the cases were on the rise. But what happened after 1990? Well, um, after 1990, between 1990 and 2003, they started to come down. And eventually, it passed zero and went into a negative. And you can't have a negative number of cases diagnosed. So this is an example of a function in, the, in real life that only a part of that function really is true or, or has any um, uh, ability to predict. Now if we just take, took a look at this, the end behavior is negative 49x cubed. So we know that it's an odd, which means it goes in opposite directions. 
and it's negative, so it's going to go from up to down. So you know somewhere in time, without even looking at the graph of this equation, that it's going to, because the, the right end goes negative, it eventually is going to become a negative number on the y-axis. So the right end falls, and at some time, uh, the value is less than zero. So you could not use this entire equation to predict the future past 1990, 91, whatever. Okay, so go ahead and do checkpoint number three. Example number four. We have uh, x to the fourth plus 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2. And we want to know what's the end behavior of this one. Now, I graph this on my graphing calculator. And I want to know, is this really the entire graph that you see right here? It's just a kind of, it almost looks like a cubic graph. Okay, there's my graph. And I have graphed this within the window of negative 8 to 8 for the x and negative 10 to 10 for the y with, an, with, an x, with a scale of 1 each time. Well, I think you can tell the fact that this is not the entire graph, and I'll show you why. Is this a complete graph that shows the end behavior? All right. Well, our lead, um, leading uh, number and leading uh, coefficient is going to be associated with negative x to the fourth power. The fourth power means that it's an even function, so both go the same way. Clearly, in what's shown on the uh, picture, they go different ways. And since they both they they both go the same way in the equation, and it's negative, then they're both going to point down. This graph does not point down. So no, that's only a partial part of the graph. You would have to really expand that window to get the entire graph of our function here. Okay, so take a look at, C, at uh, checkpoint number four. Okay, let's recap this. When we recap it, I'm just going to take a look at ax to the n. If the, if the exponent is even, the n's go in the same direction. Both point up or both point down. If the exponent is odd, they go in opposite directions. They either go up to down or down to up. Now, additionally, we need more information. If the leading coefficient is positive, then they both go up if the exponent is even. If the exponent is even and the coefficient is negative, then they both go down. If the exponent is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, then it's going to tend upward from left to right. If the leading coefficient is negative and the exponent is odd, then they're both going to tend down left to right. Let's do a couple of examples. I have three of them here. In the first one, I'm looking at negative 2x cubed. Cubed is odd, so that means they're going to go in opposite directions. And they're going to go down because the exponent or the, the um, co leading coefficient is negative. Okay, the second one is degree 3. Remember, you have to add these together. So it's degree 3, 2 plus 1, and the, which means that the tails or the, the end behavior is going to go in the opposite direction. The leading coefficient is positive 3, so that means that they're both, that it's positive, and so it's going to go down to up from left to right. In the third one, we're going to deal with 100x squared. Squared is an even function, so they're both going to go the same direction. And because the coefficient is positive, they're both going to go up. Okay, that's a lot to, to swallow. Uh, make sure that you do your checkpoints, and we'll talk about the assignment. Here comes the baby. See you guys.